Radar Update. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Right now it is September 24th, which means we are on the 23rd day of the Biblical Hebrew calendar. It goes by Celestial Reckoning, which means we are on the day right after what is typically known as the 8th day, which follows the Feast of Tabernacles. But this day is very important, and there are only so many hours in the day, so we have not covered everything that can be covered. So I hope you are always doing your own studying and watching too as well. And if you've been keeping up with TorCalendar.com, just so you know what day it's on, you would already know that today is the 23rd day, which is the Simchat Torah. And this is a day that celebrates the Torah when God gave the books of Moses and the scriptures. And this is celebrated right after the eighth day. If you're outside of Israel, if you're inside Israel, it's usually done almost continuously right on the evening of the eighth day. And so the eighth day bleeds into the next day. And I just want to emphasize that the celebrations from the eighth day bleed over into the very next day. So we're still in the celebrations of the Feast of Tabernacles. We're still in the events that happened in the shadow pattern at Shiloh and later moved to the temple in Jerusalem. So we're still in this window. We're still in a very important shadow pattern right now. I remember the passage we've been looking at. How Jesus stood up on the last day of the feast, the great day at the assembly, which was the eighth day, which would have been the evening time when he stood up and made the declaration that he was the water of life. And this would have been toward the time when the candelabras were being lit up and the evening celebrations on the eighth day were commencing. So the celebrations when Jesus was making the announcement of being the water of life, that would continue for a number of hours into the next day. So keep that in mind. Where we are right now is really a continuation of the eighth day. And the Bible also remarks about this continuation in Second Chronicles 7.10. And on the 3 and 20th day of the 7th month, he, who was Solomon, sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. And this passage is specifically talking about when Solomon dedicated the temple which is very interesting because we're talking about the tabernacle at Shiloh at this time too. But this is when they held the people over for just a little bit longer and continued the celebrations from the 8th day, carried it over into the next day, the 23rd day of the month. And on the 23rd day is when they dismissed the people. So this is a very important shadow pattern where we are right now. We are still in the concept and the shadow of the Feast of Tabernacles at Shiloh, at the temple, when Jesus Christ stood up and said that he is the living water, when Jesus Christ, who is the word made flesh, God become flesh, when Emmanuel, God with us, this is when he stood up and made that declaration. And the very next day, and also that evening, depending on whether you were in Israel or not, this time also celebrates when God gave the scriptures, when God gave the Torah. And so multiple pictures and shadow patterns coming together where we are right now. And the enemy knows exactly what time it is. The enemy knows exactly what the right calendar is. The enemy is fully expecting the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, to be revealed in this time and in this shadow pattern around here somewhere. We do not know the day or hour, neither do they. Now one thing that caught my attention that I failed to mention yesterday was the placement of the fountain. How the enemy is using it to mock Jesus Christ, the fountain of living water. But I also noticed the candelabras and the lampstands right there at the fountain too as well. And they're actually part of the fountain. These gas lit lamps that surround the fountain is part of this picture too. Jesus Christ is the living water, but he's also the light of the world. And he made that declaration at the same time. Satan knows exactly what time it is that we are on the right calendar and that the Son of Man is going to be revealed around here real soon. And they know the shadow patterns that apply to this time too as well. Just like the temple when Jesus stood up when these massive lamps were lit and he said that he was the fountain of living water. And he also declared that he was the light of the world. All this took place at the temple in Jerusalem when Jesus Christ revealed himself in the midst of the feast. And that's what Satan is expecting at this time. He's expecting the Son of Man to be revealed. And then what will follow is the Son of Perdition will be revealed. After the falling away, after the rapture, only then will the Antichrist be revealed. And in our recent videos, we talked a lot about the symbolism that Satan is laying down right now. They know exactly what time it is. And they are expecting the Son of Perdition, their timekeeper, and all the elements with time, and coming through a dimensional gateway. This is what they are expecting. Because they know time is involved in the revealing. 
And we talked about this in our video playlist, Revelation Spiral of Time. Link in the description box. Definitely check out the playlist. You can find it in our video listing too as well. Understanding time is so important to understanding prophecy. And the enemy knows it's all about time. They're timekeeper. They're son of perdition. That they are orchestrating the reminders and cue cards that he's about to be revealed to as well. As soon as he is unrestrained. It all goes back to the spiral of time. And the revelation events are depicted as a spiral of events and how they transpire. Which reminds us of the tribulum. The tribulum is the name of the sled that is used on the threshing floor. And what does the tribulum do? They ride over the wheat. This is part of the threshing process and it helps break the grain out of the stalks. And on the underside of the sled are different rocks and sharp objects. And they use this to ride and grind on the wheat. But they will ride this in a spiral fashion, around and around and around, and it repeats. The tribulum repeats. It keeps going over it until it is ground and ready. And that's the whole purpose of the tribulation time period, to break the will and rebellion in the world. The tribulum, the tribulation, is a spiral of events that repeat. We are expecting the gathering of Shiloh's people right now. The harvesting of the barley, which does not need to be threshed. It does not need to go through the tribulum. Barley is those who have an ear to hear. Those who are just winnowed by the wind. The wind blows away the chaff. Those who have an ear to hear what God wants us to do, we automatically adjust and purify and prepare our hearts so we are ready. We do our own threshing in a sense. And that is who Christ is coming back for. He's coming back for his ready bride. And this is why he constantly repeats, be ye ready. Be ye ready so you won't have to be threshed. And we are expecting the gathering of Shiloh's people right now. And this is the promise and hope and expectation that Paul taught throughout the churches, the Shiloh prophecy. And it's interesting when we consider that the Feast of Tabernacles took place originally in Shiloh, in the place which the Lord shall choose. So the Lord was tying these whole concepts of tabernacling and assemblies that happened then to Shiloh and would continue the Shiloh picture that one day we will be gathered and assembled to Shiloh, the line of the tribe of Judah. And so the tabernacle was initially set up at Shiloh, and this is where the celebrations took place, and this is where people would assemble and gather while it was there. But then eventually it was moved to Jerusalem when the temple was set up there and the Ark of the Covenant was moved to there. And the Shiloh picture transferred, in a sense, to the temple and to Jerusalem. And so we're seeing a blending of these two concepts, the tabernacling, but also the temple as well. And then in connection with the new pictures we've seen of Shiloh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ, the Messiah associated with the living water and the lamps at the Feast of Tabernacles on the eighth day, the last day, and then bleeding into the next day where we're at right now. A lot is coming together right now, and the enemy knows it. The enemy is not following some other calendar. They'll publish their rabbinical calendars to keep people distracted and to follow blind guides so they won't focus on what time it is. But Satan knows exactly what time it is, what the right biblical prophetic time is too as well. And it should catch our attention that this 23rd day of the Hebrew month, they were celebrating the dedication of the temple. And so they were continuing the Feast of Ingathering, which typically was held at Shiloh. But now the place that the Lord had chose was at Jerusalem. And David picked the place there and Solomon built the temple. And the dedication, they're blending these two ideas together at the same time. The tabernacles, the shift between tabernacles to the temple. From Shiloh to Jerusalem, the new place at Jerusalem. And if you'll remember what is so important about the place that David chose for the temple to be built at, the same place that Solomon would later build the temple and dedicate it right here at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. What was so special about that? Second Chronicles 3.1 Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. The threshing floor. All these are coming together. All these pictures and shadows. The threshing floor. The time of threshing. The temple. Shiloh. Tabernacles. Feast of Ingathering. The Feast of Ingathering. The gathering precedes the tribulation. And it's also marking a transition time from the tabernacle at Shiloh to the new place at Jerusalem. Which is also marking a larger fulfillment for us as Christians. We are expecting to be gathered to Shiloh at the new Jerusalem. This is an incredible time where we are right now, and we're learning so much about this time, we do not have the answers. We do not know the day or hour, but we see an incredible tapestry of redemption coming together right now during these very important days. So we will continue to watch. 
We have no doubt about the calendar that we're using. We know we're on the right time. The enemy is even using it. They've been alluding to this particular calendar over the last year or two as well. We pointed that out. And it all goes back to only looking at the celestial signs, not what rabbis put together, not what the book of Enoch tabulates together and pre-calculates, not what plants determine. No, from the very first days of creation, even before the book of Enoch, God told us what determines the days and the years and everything in between, the sun and the moon. And any calendar that ignores the sun and the moon together is obviously a wrong calendar. TorahCalendar.com has great in-depth articles that talk about their biblical calendaring methods. God appointed the moon for seasons, and the feast times particularly, the appointed days. Any calendar that ignores the sun and the moon as part of reckoning time is going to take you to the wrong time. It's going to be a blind guy. And in our video, Late for an Important Date, we've talked about this, and these are some slides from there. But God gives very specific warnings that we should be circumspect, be super careful to make sure the calendar is correct and lines up with the appointed feast days, which there are three. And if you miss the one because you're on the wrong calendar, you're going to automatically miss the other two. And this is a major way we know that the calendar we're following is correct because it actually works. And this is the number one question you need to ask about any calendar. Does it work? Will it bring me to the appointments that God requires us to be on time with the first fruits at? Does it actually work? And the calendar we're following works, and that's why we follow it. The rabbinical calendar is a month off, a month late, and even the Enoch calendar is two weeks off too as well. So we have no doubt about the calendar we're following is the right one. And in our Shiloh booklet, on our first few pages, we talk about determining time from a biblical perspective. We just give an intro overview of it, but TorahCalendar.com has some great in-depth articles about it. So while we do not know the day or hour, we know we are at a very important time right now, and we will continue to watch. We have high expectation that Shiloh is going to gather his people sometime very soon. So we will continue to watch, and we will update you as we go forward. I highly suggest you follow the calendar and the clock on TorCalendar.com just so you can keep up to date with where we are at. Definitely check out the calendar page. Do your own study, too, on the special days that follow the Feast of Tabernacles and the Eighth Day and all the importance that are in them. Also, keep your eye on the comment section. If we have any notes, we'll keep you updated there, as that's a whole lot quicker than putting together a new video. But we will continue to watch, we will continue to shine bright, and we will continue to stay ready, serving Jesus Christ first and highest above all else. Maranatha.